heavily. If you're not at risk, take care as you go about your daily business. Get the facts now from coronavirus.gov and your state health department. We're all in this together. Let's team up to protect our health. Everyone has a role to play as we face this challenge together. Cover your cough with your elbow like this. Welcome in to the Jordy Colada show. Wave your hand out there, baby! Shout out to the show. She puts the pinky into the nostril. Man, look at that. Healthy competition, there's nothing like it. Yo, grow up. The line's wrapped around the stadium. <laughs> Different strengths. Mm -hmm. I just lost a tooth. It's gonna be fun. You know, we might have a story. I love what you're doing. Ogeron wants to take us fishing this afternoon. Sharif, you play for the bad boys of the SEC, man. We don't apologize <laughs> to anybody. A lot of people are saying you're going to be wearing number seven. I don't really know. I want to. He <laughs> look crazy, Bill. Good <laughs> feet on the old man. Let's, Let's go! Back. Back oh, oh, no. Go! No, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with the Jordy Colada show.
All right, welcome into a Tuesday edition of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet, live here on this Tuesday. Make sure and hit that like button, share button, comment if you don't mind, as we will be here with you uh, for over an hour, for sure. <laughs> For sure, uh, Stephen Waggespack, who has put his name into the gubernatorial race, there you go. is going to stop by. Say that again. The, you uh, got it right the first time. In He's the good. studio at eight o'clock this morning, and then the new head coach for the McNeese head basketball team, or the uh, the basketball team over at head co- uh, the head coach for the McNeese <laughs> basketball team. Sheesh. The Good governor stop. of the McNeese basketball Will Wade team will be here at seven thirty this morning. We got a full house. As usual. Here in As the studio. Usual. Nothing new here. It's the normal Tuesday. <laughs> no, we're all back. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Just working. Man. Just working, you know. Just doing our thing. Good to see everybody at work. Yeah. Uh, make sure and hit that like button, share button, comment button if you don't mind. Like we said, LSU baseball plays tonight. They will take on UNO. UNO will be uh, in town. That will be a 6.30 start. Uh, this will be the final tune-up before SEC play starts for LSU baseball. Uh, another announcement yesterday from the LSU football program, Jordan Arsamont uh, is now the Director of Player Development uh, over at LSU football. We will talk a little bit about that here in the first hour. Uh, and then, uh, as we said, we would be joined by uh, by Will Wade and be joined by uh, Stephen Wagaspeck. Still waiting on Aaron Rodgers to make a decision, which is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I thought you were saying point. still waiting on Aaron Rodgers to confirm if he's coming on or not. Uh, I mean, that too. That too. <laughs> he reached, might come on. I reached I out. He, Stay he, tuned. He, he would sue us probably, actually. No, no that's that's his predecessor. That's Brett's job. <laughs> Which we got to be careful with that. He's not, he's throwing lawsuits left and right. We've said some things. Yeah, we've said some things. He's got some Baton Rouge ties, too. He does. Get sued by Brett. Easily. Right? I mean, Brett, what we've do you want? We've gone pretty dude? hard on him, though. Yeah, I mean, you know, right. what do you want? What I mean, Pat want? McAfee, or you want the Colada show? Right. Yeah, I mean, you're going to sue him for $40 million. What do you want, 40 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> What's in your wallet? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we have a closet full of copper fit. <laughs> I mean, exactly. And Wranglers. Yeah, and Wranglers. Yeah, hell yeah. I got Jerry Rice over here. <laughs> you want to come back? We need we'll a pick quarterback. Pick up football game? <laughs> yeah. I got first pick. You want to coach my son? Uh, but LSU baseball tonight, uh, as we said, will take on uh, UNO in their final tune up before Texas A&M this weekend. Uh, We're going to talk to Doug Thompson tomorrow morning here and get a little bit of a primer of what to expect this weekend in College Station and get a recap uh, of tonight. But, you know, as we said yesterday, LSU looks the part of the number one team in the country. Well, they are the number one team Uh, in the country. They feel like it. (laughs) Uh, And they are, uh, they feel like they're they're, they're far and away the number one team in the country. But as, uh, you know, as we'll we'll learn when the competition gets going, um, We'll find out. Well, they're if, on if a 10-game win streak. So tell me the last time that they were on. It's their longest streak since when? Uh, 2017. Was it 17? Yes, 2017. Yeah. They yeah. won 17 in a row. All golds. From May 11th through June 17th. That's when the gold That's jersey wild, trend right? like really yeah. took off. Pulmonary's like, we're going to wear them in midweek. Gross. I mean, they can easily do this again. Yeah. The golds are my least favorite of the, of the uniforms. Ooh. What's That's your a favorite? hot take. Yeah, Grace. Oh, I like Grace. Grace. Yeah. Grace. The pinstripes this year are fine. I was about to say, yeah. I go pinstripe. The pinstripes are are, are up there. Um, well, they did a little like rebranding. Like they, they kind of updated the font a little bit. They took so the looks, piping yes. off, which looks I good. Think. Black jerseys the worst they've ever done in the <gasps> Spook Laval era. No, ever. Y'all are just being mean about that. Ever. Y'all know I like all blacks. Uh, black jerseys are. Uh, no, blacks. they were not all blacks like your like, Mississippi yeah, State. Yeah, Mississippi State. That's, that's Adidas. That's like, yeah, they look like a youth softball team. Church League. Yeah, they should try it. We got black try. pants. <laughs> Start Vegas across Play, the chest. Yeah, <laughs> such a cool, such a cool jersey. Playing on turf, <laughs> like Dang Sunday no night. Uh, but yeah, I think the golds are highly overrated. Same. No, well, I, mean, I disagree. Hard disagree. They've just always been around, right? Uh, they came around like the mid nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you like, like the grays because that's like your era. But I think it's the <laughs> cleanest as well. Yeah, but you think of like nineteen ninety one. I do. Yeah. Do they have <laughs> all golds? <laughs> No. no, Katie. Katie, okay. Katie nobody's like wearing all pants? anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody's wearing all like anything. Like Savannah bananas. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Triple A squad. I would be here for it. Uh, yeah, of course you are. That's what Mississippi State does. They have black uniforms and black pants. The only time that people do that is all whites and like all grays. I like tops and pants to match. I like every football uniform that does that too. This yeah. is nothing new. That's weird. Uh, Lay off. See, I'm off so of baseball that too, is man. different. Yeah. I don't. I'm, I'm kind of. I, I kind of think the all blacks for the Saints are a little overrated. 
What? Oh yeah. Those are uh, the best uniforms to me. That they what are you have. talking about with the black helmet? Uh, all or the, the, just the all black. Like, the all black. I'm. I, I like the white with the gold pants. The all white. I'm, I'm old school. Mm. The white with the gold pants is the is the best. That's that the is classic the look. One, right? The traditional makes me think of Reggie Bush. Me too. Yes. Like yeah. that's what it makes Just me think of. Tracy with the, Porter. Yeah, with the Louisiana <laughs> on the on the like 2006 version of the uniform. Yes. Yes, but see, I think all blacks, and I think that brings you back to like primetime Drew Brees, Sean Payton, whenever they murdered yeah, the that's Patriots, true. and you're just like. The Saints come out in prime time and all black. It's over. Yeah, but now it's kind of turned to all whites. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. changing the guard. Yeah, they yeah. back to all blacks with Derek Carr to match his black eyeliner. Yeah, yep, mm. and his tan. <laughs> what do you mean? We need to talk to. Uh, we need to get Foster Moreau on here because he was the one that was blasting him on Hard Knocks whenever he like Derek Carr showed eyeliner? up with his yeah and his jersey <laughs> rolled up and he was like, yeah. "Are you wearing baby oil?" And he's like. <laughs> No, and he's like, yeah, you are, and he's like, no, it's 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 like uh, tanning cream, like the spray. Yeah. And he's like, that's baby oil. I know it. He's like, yeah, it's baby oil. He and was so wearing, Foster's like, he was gonna give him shit for a while. Yeah, he was wearing it at practice. He was wearing baby oil. I don't it know. helps you tan. Uh, Foster Moreau is not the guy you want coming after you. No, he's ruthless. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, like, he takes not, body blows. He's not the dude. He's not the dude you want on your trail. No, I mean, because once you're on it, yes, you ain't getting off. Yes, there's a one way stop. You have to enjoy this ride. He was after me for a minute in the media because I was I was kind of young radio, more arrogant than I probably should have been at the time. No. He's, uh, he put off two feet in the pod. Yes, right. I mean, and, uh, we went back and forth like on a like just like a. Uh, like a Tuesday afternoon session, and then me and Hester had him on one time, like right when he got drafted. I was on that show. You I produced that, that one. Yeah, that's like how coming, I know. Remember, he was like coming off the top <laughs> rope at me because we all like kind of like, like perked right, up. Chill, like, bro. Whoa. Chill, chill, chill. All right, congratulations, man. You made it. That's what that was when you were on your eighteen verse seven rant. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, and oh. so that's right. That's oh, what pissed him off. He was on hold, and he was like, what's this motherfucker yeah. saying about him? He was like, Jordan, you better fucking sit up. Like, yeah. this guy's coming. Yeah, that's right. So Foster's awesome. So that's you're right. saying you're not going to get him on the show now? Uh, we could, because he's like, yeah. He, I mean, Absolutely. He would, he would love, love this for him. He would love that. Uh-huh. He would love that. Um, but he would also be a great, he would be a great Host. resource on Derek Carr. Yeah. I mean, for sure. I, 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 where is he at in his contract status? about to look it up. I mean, he's probably got to be on the block soon. Four-year, $3 million dollar deal with Oakland. So he's still still out there kicking. Hmm. No, no doubt. No, no doubt. I mean, but he's, like, he's, he's got to be close to <laughs> contract time. Negotiating, right. I would hope he gets another deal. He seems like, it seems like every time he's in the game, he does something right. Yeah. I mean, Foster Moreau is one of those guys that was the 25th signee to the class. I want to say he was like a two-lane commit for a while and then like decommitted late in the process and committed to LSU and was a big-time, big-time basketball player. Really? Like a problem basketball player. Was a, I mean, just a brutal matchup. And you talk to people like that were on those teams with him and like you ask like, who's the best athlete on the team during that time? I mean, like, mind you, this is like, Jamal Adams, Leonard yeah. Fournette era mm-hmm. of LSU football. There Jadavious are White. pros walking uh-huh. around everywhere. And Foster Moreau's name came up a ton just as a guy that was just a natural athlete. Yeah. And if you've ever seen him play basketball, and I saw him play one time in high school, and, I mean, he was a issue. Like, you, there was nobody that could check him because he was, he was smooth enough like he could handle the ball outside. But once he got down low – you could forget it. I mean, he was just too big. He was almost like Glenn Davis. I wonder why he didn't stay in basketball. Mm, oh, is he six four? Yeah, six you six four. I mean? Don't play. Yeah. There's a lot of six foot four tight ends in the NFL. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of six foot four post players in the yeah. NBA. Yeah. Um, so I mean, he definitely made the right choice. Mm-hmm. But just his athleticism, I think, is very underrated. You know, when you think of him, I don't think you 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 would think, you know, big time athlete. And I mean. He is. I mean, yeah. he is a he's a beast of an athlete. He also told that great story on um, Donnie Alexander, the boys on the yeah the the busting with the boys podcast mm-hmm. when he told the LSU fight story about the scrimmage when they were like, "What's the craziest fight story you have <laughs> in college?" And Foster told the story about like how it was like Leonard and that offense. 
when it got like, chippy. Yeah, like talked about how like like jumped the defense mm-hmm. like inside the locker room. I mean, like the story is <laughs> nuts. I mean, it is like it is something. It, it is a coach's. It's a player who like doesn't like that type of stuff. It's your worst nightmare. You know I mean? I'm, like, I'm actually scared. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Wanna... Like I'm getting dressed and getting the hell out of here. Like Going Foster home, was like saying, like that's what he was trying to do. He was like, I was thinking about like leaving with my pads on. <laughs> like, you know Why what I mean? Like, so somebody tried to hit him with a pipe. Yeah. Why? Because <laughs> they said he took like practice. a late. They, like somebody thought he took a late shot in a scrimmage, and I mean, one like, of his teammates just carried over matter? into right. Yes, Katie. This is you got to realize this is a bunch of alpha dogs in one yeah, locker room. I know. So it could get ugly. <laughs> yeah, but that's wild. Somebody, somebody really came at him with a pipe. Well, he t- and he said he got. He obviously got molly whopped. Like he said, he like he didn't think that they were gonna fight. He didn't know right. what to do, and he's right. like, "No, we're fighting." And the whole locker room's watching. He goes, "Oh, he caught me clean with the left." I've looked down. I'm bleeding everywhere. He's like, "I'm ready for this to be over." I'm like, done. like I'm done. I, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want any of these problems. So, shit. And Jeez. poor Foster, like he, that athlete that he was, and he gets buried on that LSU team with no use of a tight end. Like, right. He never really got to shine at all. And he still they got started it. to use him a little bit when Ogeron took over mm-hmm. because Ensminger started to really use the tight end. He was the tight end's coach, and they made him the offensive coordinator, and they really started to incorporate the tight end. If you remember Les Miles' last game at Auburn, they only scored one touchdown, and Foster scored it. It was like an accident. <laughs> they, like, flipped it to him, and he, like, made a play. Am I um, but he was – you could see it. Like, you could see, like, this guy is going to be – if he gets into a system – and with the way that the tight end was budding in the NFL and it had become such a focal point, you knew somebody was going to put him out there. Because he's – Foster is a guy that he doesn't tip personnel. Like, a lot of issues with tight ends are they can't block. So, like, when they're on the field, defenses automatically know they're passing the, fo- they're, they're passing the ball. And Morrow is one of those guys that you can keep him out there for three downs because he's athletic enough to run around and catch a pass – but he's also big and strong enough where he can stay in line and block for you if you need him to do that as well. And he doesn't mind doing it. Like, he kind of – he likes that. He kind of, like, laughs while he's blocking. You know what I mean? Like, he's one of those kind of, like – uh, that's boy. probably what pissed those guys off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he plays with this arrogance to him, like this – just this mentality to him that he loves the violence. He loves the – he wants to fight. There's no brother-in-law in it at practice with Foster, I wouldn't imagine. Especially whenever you – I mean, he had to block with – under less for three years, oh God. and he's like, mm. like I'm pissed actually. I mean, so, yeah, imagine yeah, the DNs he had to block. God, they cut. Harden Key. Oh Jesus! How long did he stay here? The Neil Hunter. He was four, four years. years. And then where did he go after that? Oakland. Vegas. Did Oakland draft him, or were they already? Yeah, in they Vegas? drafted. I think him. they were already in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. No, it's 2019, right? Because he's a uh, he's a. The the year year agent before, this year, he was on, he was on Burrow's deal. first team. Yes, because mm-hmm. him and Burrow are tight. That's who, Burrow, that's who Burrow was partying with after the Natty. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Was, was Foster. Had, uh, in oh, New Orleans. Cool. At the Red Eye. <laughs> I mean, brother. <laughs> I mean, Foster runs that city. You could you slip know? and fall and, and get lucky there. <laughs> there was so, the floor was wet. Yes. <laughs> Somebody in there. It was. <laughs> Wait. It was <laughs> wet. It was Joe very Burrow wet. Joe Burrow was DJing. They had that said Big Dick Joe on it. <laughs> like, he did. Yeah. Oh, my. Cigar. <laughs> then he had to do an interview in the morning. Joe Burrow did pardon my take that morning. Was and it he, that morning? Mm-hmm. Did that? Edo yeah, did it too. That's right. And I saw PFT that night and uh, Rosillo and Chris Long. And they're like, we have to interview Edo in the morning. And PFT's eyes were fucking sideways. And I was like, bro, y'all got to wake up at like 6.30 and it's 3.30. And he's like, yeah. We, no chance. And Dan's already gone. Big Cat had already left. And he's like, we'll do it. And they're, they're, they have like a behind the scenes of them in like – the interview lobby or whatever, and they sit there, and Ed walks, and he's like, Jesus Christ, what did I get myself into? <laughs> and Joe's like, I was still drunk. Y'all were definitely drunk. And he's like, it's not our best moment, but y'all won. It's 2019, dude. What do you want from us? That's a, and that's a great kind of reaction, you know, to have that on film, to see that morning, kind of like that morning after with Burrow of just that season, you know? I mean, that the, what they got from him in that time, because Burrow didn't do a lot of media. No. That season at all. Like, he didn't do a lot. And you could tell, like, he really liked that show. It was kind of like, whatever you guys need, I'll do it. And you know I'm done. I mean? If I need to show up, like, the morning after, we, you know, party all night, I'll <laughs> probably, do it. Probably all walked in together. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but I, it, it would be interesting to hear what Foster would say about Derek Carr and his fit uh, in New Orleans. But it does look like this, this Aaron Rodgers thing is going to happen. 
to yeah. the Jets. I mean, it just looks like it's a matter of time before that announcement is made. Uh, and, you know, this same discussion is what we talked about a couple of weeks back on just the quarterbacks in the NFC. Where are they? Who are they? Jalen Hurts is leading Philadelphia. Aaron Rodgers now leaves Green Bay. And Jordan Love will take over there. I mean, stop me when you're intimidated by anyone <laughs> in the NFC that, that's going to play quarterback this year. I mean, Jordan Love... Kyler Murray, Derek Carr. I mean, you could even siphon it down. I mean, just in where's, Carolina, South. where's Carolina going? Well, they just got the first pick. I know, but I mean, you know, it's either going to be like Bryce Young. I, I It feels like they have fallen in love with Anthony Richardson. I've oh, seen I the odds. in Bryce Young. The odds have changed for C.J. Stroud. He went That's from like I would plus take. 300 to like minus 300. So mm-hmm. obviously somebody has some sort of inside information after the trade happened. It seemed like at the Combine he was the best player. It seemed like he was the one that really left and proved the most when he got there. And I think, I mean, look, man, Ryan Day has done an incredible job of developing quarterbacks. You can say what you want about his record at Ohio State and what he's done against Michigan and, you know, where, where, where he stands right now as far as his job goes. But if C.J. Shroud goes one overall, I mean, look at the quarterbacks that he's put into the league. I mean, guys that have been selected in the first round – and, and gone on to play at a, at a pretty high level, um, you know, I mean, is, is something that you can, you can definitely recruit towards if you're, if you're Ohio State and Ryan Day. But uh, it, it feels like after hearing draft coverage and combine coverage that uh, C.J. Stroud felt like he was one of the, the biggest winners in Indianapolis after his workouts. It feels like he's a marriage of the two, right? Of Anthony Richardson yeah. and Bryce Young, where you get the size and a little bit of the athleticism. When C.J. Stroud kind of showed out in the bowl game where he could run a little bit, I think that eased a lot of people's mind to see that he could he's a little bit more mobile. And when he threw at the combine, it was easy. And so it's just kind of, I think Bryce Young should probably go first just because of body of work and what he does at the quarterback position. I know he's little, and the two, it doesn't help at all. Like that scenario where if you're that small, you can obviously get slung around a little bit. But... <laughs> He was I, I would so be scared good. off. I, I yeah. would be scared off by Bryce. I really do. I, I think that Bryce Young is he is he's a very skilled, talented quarterback. I mean, he looks as if he's one of the, the the first to arrive of these like robo quarterbacks. That since he's been you know four or five, kind of like Colin Hurley, what LSU's about to get. Mm-hmm. I mean, this kid since he's been five years old has been training to be a quarterback. When you go watch him play at 15, you're like, wow. I mean, this is far in advance. The same thing was probably said about Bryce Young. When you watched him play at 15, you were probably like, wow, this is this kid just understands how to play the position. But once you get to the NFL, man, you know, 5'10", 175 pounds is 5'10", 175 pounds. And if you can't move like Kyler Murray can, which Kyler Murray feels like almost like a video game, out there in the way that he's like dancing around and making these big guys miss. Um, it, it just, you know, it's Tua. You're Tua. You know, I mean, you're, you, you're a rag doll. I mean, you are, if you're standing still and can't move and can't get these guys, you know, away from you, you are a target, man. You're a sitting target that could be, you know, Tua's life has changed because of football. It'll never be the same. And, you know, he's young and feels indestructible and, obviously has people around him that, you know, are telling him it's okay to do this. But, I mean, that wasn't all right, what we saw. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way to spin what you saw on television, what your eyeballs were Mm -hmm. telling you. Like, that doesn't look right. You know what I mean? And then for them to come out and say that it was a back injury is almost an even bigger slap in the face. Yeah, it was. Look, man, we get it. We know what we're signing up for as fans in watching the product and understand that. I, I didn't think that the, the Hamlin thing could happen. Right, exactly. But, you know, I mean, now we know. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, somebody could literally die in front of your face <laughs> yeah. by watching this. I mean, someone basically did. They did. They absolutely did. And they still tried to play. Um, <laughs> I know. Five minutes, I'll get warmed up. Like, yeah. I don't feel like playing today. I'll never forget that, just watching Burrow just start throwing passes, like warming back up. I don't know what I would do in that scenario either. That's like, if you're you Burrow, you're probably just like, this feels like the most natural thing to yeah. do. Like, it's like when you're at like a wedding and it gets called off. You're like, yeah. well, I guess, like, you're in an awkward conversation, you have a drink, you're just right. like, I'm going to just keep doing Everyone this. Everyone is stunned. Yeah. So I'd, I have a football, I guess I'll throw it. Yeah. And then 
we're not going to play. Right. Okay, good. Going home. Yikes. But that's what – and the way the NFL rules have changed for how you have to tackle a quarterback, like – Mm-hmm. To a, the, he, he's going to get slung down because you can't hit him clean. Right. And once they get their hands on him, they're not blowing it dead. Well, I mean, like, once once these guys, like, put their hands on 175 oh pounds. Oh, my God. I mean, that's like that's like you picking up a toddler. You saw what happened mm-hmm. to Jane Daniels? You know, I mean, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it, this is, it, it is like putting them in a washing machine. I know. You know, like, you've got no chance of getting away from this stuff. But the only reason I would, I would say, like, Bryce Young is okay in the NFL is because he's played three years in the SEC and hasn't been hurt. I get it, Stewie. That's true, Stewie. I get like, it, Stewie. Not once. But Alabama's offensive line's not traveling with him, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And there's a different scenario back there. I mean, think about how many times over the last three years that Bryce Young has been pressured. How many times has Bryce Young felt the heat? Six, seven times max? Harold Perkins. I mean, not even a full season, for, for sure. I mean, Georgia – in the Natty, Georgia mm-hmm. in the SEC title game. I mean, there were times where he had to turn it up. Texas in Austin, I mean, he had to play. I mean, but all in all, over the last three-year stretch, the majority of the time, he's been playing with a pretty clean uniform in the fourth quarter, mm-hmm. right, where he's got the skill set to stand back there. I mean, if you've got the number one offensive line in the league, which Carolina does not, right, and it's going to be a hell of a growth period for whoever they take. I mean, all of these number one picks – you know, rarely do you see Justin Herbert. Rarely do you see just you know Joe Burrow come in here where you're like, man, this transition looks pretty easy this for these missing. guys. You know, I mean, it was even tough. For, I mean, Trevor Lawrence just is really starting to catch on. You know, I mean, it's it's for yeah, as good true. as he is. But that's when you get into like you have to be almost in a. It depends on who's coaching you. Like you saw that transition from Trevor Lawrence under Urban Meyer, where he looked like a bust, to year two under Doug Peterson, like oh he took the next step. It's mm-hmm. like. If you don't go into a situation where your coach is able to help you in any – like, Doug Peterson is a great quarterback's coach. He's an offensive guy. I don't even know who Carolina's head coach is. I was about to is. say, who is Carolina's coach? But, I mean, they still have – I mean, he'll still be uh, protected Frank Reich. there. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's right. I wouldn't want to go there. The third Reich. And they just traded <laughs> their number one receiver. I mean, I yeah, think – Throw yeah, him in there. Right. I think they have a very impatient owner. Yeah. I mean, I think he's like one, two, or three richest guys in the league. Uh-huh. Like, if he's not the first, yeah. he's the second. Yeah, he's up there. So I think, like, he's like, yeah. what is this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, pay for it. Right. <laughs> I want to win. Right. You Can know I what buy I mean? This? Like, I mean, Derek Carr kind of duped him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I think they thought they were getting Carr for a yeah. minute. Um, well, they seem pretty certain about what they're doing. So. Yeah, I don't Do know. Do they? I mean, like, I mean, they're shipping away all these draft picks. They yeah. just dealt DJ Moore. Yeah. I mean, DJ Moore got you 1,000 yards with Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, and... Matt Corral. Matt Corral. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, <laughs> like yeah. a bunch of bums. He's probably pumped. I mean, I, I, I mean get me out of the here. Person or, that, or what the Chicago Bears have said is like, hey, Justin Fields, you've got no more excuses. Yeah. Well, we've, got you, we've got you wide receivers. We've got you weapons. And, you know, I mean, with the amount of draft picks that Carolina has shipped over to the Bears, a couple of number ones, a couple of twos, I mean, you can you can put a team together without – if you've got a quarterback. Yeah. You know, I mean – person that's happy in Carolina is Terrace Marshall, though. Terrace Marshall is happy. Um, that's such a rich guy move to be like, take all the picks. Absolutely. Be, like, like, I'm it so, it, like you said, it's it, – the his patience is worn I mean, thin. Like, like, what do you mean I can't buy it? He's had a temper tantrum. Oh, like but, behind closed doors, he's looked like a twelve-year-old kid. You know what I mean? Like, why can't give I give me buy a this? quarterback? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I mean, like this guy's five ten, one hundred seventy-five pounds. I don't care. Uh, I want him. Yeah, I mean, like send DJ Moore to the Bears. They, they could have him. Yeah, I mean, just like it's. <laughs> what does it take? Take his ball and go home. Just a, a billionaire, just you know, like stomping his feet. Pounding his desk. But I want Bryce Young. <laughs> I mean, this is the same David Tepper that has a pair of brass balls on his desk. He literally has like Does a, he really? Yes. So that's what you know when you're getting when you walk into that office. Like, oh, it's this is a madman. Like, can't just it has to you have to put some resources together. It's like, oh, I've got big balls, I'm buy it. Yeah, right. I think, that's weird. And then yeah, he got into some spat with the previous owner about the Carolina Panthers like statue. Like the yeah. guy wanted well, to keep I mean, it. <laughs> Jerry Richardson had it like signed into the contract. There's a there was one of the strangest statues that's ever been created. I think yeah. in sports was outside of Carolina's stadium, and it was Jerry Richardson actually riding a panther. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> 
<laughs> and in the sale of the team, he had it like he had. I got it. He had it it's right here. He had it put into oh. the into the contract of the team that it had, that to, it, stay. It had to stay. That's so wild. But there was a clause in the contract that stated if Richardson was ever charged with a crime, uh-uh. that they could remove the statue. And he was a he was accused and charged with, I believe, sexual You're harassment. And they and so he they, was set up on the yes <laughs> yeah. on the hour that they were like he's guilty. They had a crane no. lifting that thing out of the stadium. Oh I mean, my god, was... that was so planned. <laughs> yeah, you mess with David Tepper, see if we can't find <laughs> <Yeah>. some dirt. <laughs> like, how much is too rich? It there's, doesn't exist. There's, there's yeah. a picture there's of the a crane what pulling a weird it out. Statue, oh yeah, though. it's like Saddam Hussein getting toppled. <laughs> <laughs> it is like that. Change of the guard here, boys. <laughs> uh, all right, next, Will Wade, McNeese head basketball coach. That sounds weird. Uh, we'll be here next. It's a phone call, Stewie. Can we still boot uh, up? Uh, I don't know. We'll Can McNeese boot up? We'll I think him. it'd be boots up. Uh, we'll uh. ask him. Uh, we'll wait here next for the Jordy Collada Show. Cowboy up. <laughs> Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left, and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. In a wreck... Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done. Are you looking for sound financial advice? Then get in touch with Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. You can call him today at 225-261-8262 or email daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. If you're planning for retirement, saving for college, for children or grandchildren, or just looking for sound investment opportunities, get in touch with Daniel today, 225-261-8262. Located on Magnolia Square Drive in Central, Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. Don't let the name fool you. Men's Total Health has offerings for the ladies, too. Guys, is your wife or partner suffering from urinary incontinence, low sexual desire, or pain during sex? Then the O-Shot might be for her. Don't let it scare you. It's totally natural. It's PRP. And Mike Roach and the crew at Men's Total Health will make you as comfortable as you can be. Contact me for more information, katie at jordycoladashow.com, and I'm happy to tell you everything that Men's Total Health has to offer for the ladies. Fourier Insurance Agency, established in 1946, locally can help you with any of your home, auto, commercial, contractors, life and health insurance today. Give them a call, 225-383-0682 or log online to FourierAgency.com.
All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet, live here on this Tuesday, full studio here as we are celebrating for our guy who was announced yesterday, officially, as the McNeese head basketball coach. It's been cool to watch this happen over the last 48, 72 hours as it has become real. Will Wade is back in the sport. He's back on the sideline where he deserves to be, where he needs to be, changing and affecting kids' lives. Uh, Coach is here with us for the next couple of minutes on this Tuesday morning. Will Wade here with us on the uh, Jordy Collada Show. Coach, good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Doing good, man. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, um, (laughs) Excited to be back and even more excited to be, you know, back uh, in Louisiana. So it's been a good, uh, been, been a good few days. Yeah. Tell me what this, what what this process was like. This, this happened pretty quick, right? With you and, uh, with you and Heath. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously somebody I've I've known for a long time. Uh, we had a we had a very good relationship dating back, you know, ten twelve years, um, from when he was an assistant. And and actually, I worked with a guy, uh, Kenny Blakeney at Harvard, who's now the head coach at Howard, who's taken Howard to the NCAA tournament. Just a wow. tremendous coach. But Blake and I shared an office, and Blake went to Dematha with Heath. And uh, at the time when Blake and I shared an office, he said. You know, you and Heath need to meet. You guys are like peas in a pod. And uh, so Blake kind of introduced us because they went to high school together at DeMatha Catholic. And um, then we just kind of took off, uh, took off from there. So we've known each other a long time. And, you know, there's a familiarity with the process. And the university uh, really, really wanted to, to get it done and get it done quick with 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 the president, and, um, you know, the president of the Athletic Foundation and everybody. So it came together. Uh, came together pretty quickly because everybody was working in the working in the same direction. Southwest Louisiana was affected uh, a lot during your stint as LSU's head coach, and you would take your team down to that part of the state routinely to assist with any type of help that that, that you could in 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 helping that that community get back on, on on their feet. What did you learn about that part of the state during that time? I tell you what, man, it's I mean it's still pretty battered. Um, uh, you know, I'm staying at the Nugget right now, and you come out, and, and there's three or four hotels. There's a courtyard of spring. I mean, they're they're still not back open, and got and got stuff got stuff messed up with them. So, there's still parts of McNeese's campus that have tarps on the roofs. Um, so, I mean, it's it's still, I mean, it's it's still pretty pretty battered. It's going to take another another uh, you know another year or so, I think, for everything down here uh, to recover. Now, now there's been some 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 great progress and a, and a lot of great stuff. Uh, with the recovery, but there's there's still some uh, there's still still quite a bit of work uh, work to be done. But uh, it's a great community. It's a great area. Really, really uh, good people. And uh, you know, we're, we're, I'm excited about uh, you know meeting some people. We had a, a, a great dinner last night with a lot of folks, and just really looking forward to continuing to meet people and get out in the community and and be a part of this uh, this community down here. Uh, one facility that is not battered is the new basketball arena. Coach, I got to be honest, man. I mean, just through the pictures, I haven't seen it up close and been in it, but through the pictures that you guys are putting out on social media, uh, that, that looks like a heck of a place to play. It's incredible. I mean, it's, uh, I couldn't believe how nice it was. I was in shock. Um, just everything from the, uh, from the training room to the, to the, you know, to the locker room, to the swim. I mean, it's, it was, it was the pictures don't even do it justice. I'd looked at the pictures online and, and that sort of thing, but, but just being able to see it in person and, and be there in person, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's incredible. They did it. They did a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal, phenomenal job with it. And it's a, it's a big time, big time arena. It reminds me a lot of Mercer's arena from when I was in the, when I was in the SoCon and uh, they had, they had a beautiful arena. It's a perfect size. It's a great size, 4,500 people. And so, yeah, now we got to get forty five hundred people that want to come and want to sit in the thing to watch us. So that's the uh, that's the next step on things here. Uh, program hasn't won much over the last two seasons. What's the what, what's the challenge first? How, how do you approach this in in establishing uh, the program? Well, yeah, I mean we've got we got a lot of work to do. I mean we hadn't had a winning season since 2010, 2011. So that'd be the first box to check. We haven't been to the tournament in over twenty years. Uh, and then, you know, more immediately, yeah, we, we, we've, uh, you know, we've struggled the last couple of years. We've lost, um, you know, we've lost 45 games the last couple of years. So 122. So we've, we've got some, we've got some work to do uh, to, to, to flip that around and turn that around and, and, and make sure that we're, 
uh, you know, that we're, that we're uh, getting back to our winning ways. So, you know, we're going, I'm, I'm, I've actually got a bunch of meetings today with, with players on the roster and, and a couple more tomorrow. And so try to try to sift through that, uh, try to sift through that right now and, and, and see where everybody stands and see who wants to stay and see who wants to go in the portal. And then, you know, we'll attack, uh, we will attack the portal relentlessly the next couple of weeks uh, to uh, to uh, to upgrade uh, to upgrade uh, to upgrade in a few spots. That's, uh, that, that's putting it mildly. I, I, I can imagine so. Uh, the staff, a lot of familiar faces, I see. So w- w- this was probably pretty easy in in putting that group together, right? Well, it's not all official yet, but I've I've certainly offered everybody who kind of you know who was with me at LSU and the guys who could make it work financially and the guys who can come are going to come and 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 obviously there's certainly some of them that that, that it just doesn't uh, doesn't work for because of location and finances and, and that sort of thing. But it'll have uh, it'll have a distinct flavor of guys who are with me at you know the vast majority of them will be guys who are with me at, at LSU and been with me for. Uh, you know, been been with me for a while, so I'm looking forward to, to getting everybody here. Nelson's here now. Nelly Hernandez is here now, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll get get another couple here over the next couple of weeks. But look forward to getting everybody here and, and really getting in the gym and getting to work. Uh, you mentioned it at the beginning of of the conversation, but but how important, or maybe not important, how how cool is it for you to be back in the state? Oh, it feels great. I mean, I, I love it down here. I said, uh, I told him, I told the search committee this, you know. I, I'm not from Louisiana, but but this is home. Like I wasn't born here, but this 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 has been home to me. And so, um, never had a connection with the people like I had when I, you know when, when I was at LSU with the folks of Louisiana. So, very excited to be back. Very fortunate that uh, there was a job in state that, that that would hire me, and it's I think it's a tremendous tremendous job. And so just uh, just excited about being back and excited about uh, building this program here. Uh, I asked you this on the podcast last week, and, and I believe we're going to keep the podcast moving, which we're all excited about over here. Um, but what have you learned in this year, uh, just being away from something that you love so much? You know, I, you know, doing some of the NBA training camps and some of the NBA mini camps, I learned a lot of different stuff, watching those practices and, and, and spending time, you know, spending time at that, at, at that sort of thing. I thought that was, uh, I thought there's some spacing stuff and some, and some different things offensively that, that we'll certainly, uh, improve in and cer- certainly be better at. Um, so I thought that was, that was good. And then, you know, really just being able to go around and watch other colleges practice, being around to go over, go around and talk to other college coaches and, and, and see some different things that, that each of these guys are doing, I think is, uh, I think has been really, really good as well. So um, there's certainly some, th- a lot of things I've picked up in the, uh, you know, in the little sabbatical here. And, and, and I hope it'll uh, be put to good use here at uh, McNeese. Uh, what are we going with? Cowboy up? Boots up? I think okay. saddle ups what they're going with, but okay. we'll 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 we'll, uh, okay. we'll see. We got, still, you know, you kind of got to let it you got to let it marinate a little bit. Still of the workshopping. Lab. That's right. That's right. That's right. We're still saddle working the, on. Saddle the f up. Uh, that's right. <laughs> I'm on, boys. Uh, congratulations, man. It's great to see you back on the sideline. That's where you deserve to be. That's where you need to be. It's cool to see it happening here in the state of Louisiana. I know that McNeese people are fired up. So uh, we'll see you soon. We'll see you guys soon. I appreciate it, and uh, let's have a good uh, NCAA tournament week here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, guys. All right, there he is. Will Wade checking in. New McNeese head basketball coach. That's so weird. Here on this, uh, here on this Tuesday. Saddle um, up. Saddle There's so up. much you can do with yeah. that. <laughs> They're going to take that on tire droppings for you, Jordy. Oh, my God. Jordy, saddled up. We're going bareback. <laughs> yeah, bareback. Yeah, right. <laughs> Forget that saddle, coach. <laughs> you won't be needing that. <laughs> Rookies, they <laughs> can turn around and do the reverse. Oh my god! Whatever you want, Jesse. you can really take this really far. Uh, <laughs> daily, we're brought to you day. by Katie's Restaurant. Katie uh, coach. Katie's <laughs> neighborhood restaurant for the entire city. Uh, look, typical neighborhood style cuisine that you can find uh, just around the corner, around the uh, around the neighborhood. It is a neighborhood dive. It is a neighborhood spot. It is full of New Orleanians. You get the feel of the city. Uh, you get the taste of the city. Uh, you get the vibe of the city. Go check them out at Katie's in Mid City. They're online. Uh, Katie's in Mid City.com. Katie's in Mid City.com is where you can find them. Uh, and they are located on Iberville Street, 3701 Iberville Street. You can always check out their sister restaurant, Francesca's by Katie's, which is a, uh, a deli and uh, features kind of St. Louis and New Orleans style deli menu options. It's located in Lakeview. Uh, but you can always. 
Look at everything online at katiesinmidcity.com, katiesinmidcity.com. So I appreciate Will Wade for stopping by. We're going to talk to Stephen Waggis back coming up here in the next couple of minutes as Wags put his name in the in the uh, the gubernatorial mm-hmm. there you go. <laughs> race. Said it right again. You did. Uh, Two in as, a row. Uh, <laughs> as this, uh, this makes a lot of sense, I think, for a lot of politicos around Louisiana uh, because of uh, Stephen Waggis back's just – tie to the Capitol as the president of lobby over the last couple of years. So we'll ask him uh, why that decision, uh, how this thing's about to ratchet up, how his life's going to change. And uh, man, a lot of people around him think he's really got a, a strong shot to win. So uh, looking forward to our conversation with uh, a great dude, Stephen Wagaspak coming up here at 8 a.m. I saw the news yesterday that Jordan Arsimont was named director of player development at LSU. And many people were asking, what's that mean? You know, what, what what's, What's that mean in this role? And I think um, if you have watched this role kind of develop over the years, this is the position that Kevin Falk held uh, and started at LSU before he was the running backs coach. Um, but in this position, um, you, you are able to um, really have an effect on the students, um, you know, both from an athletic and both from an academic standpoint – um, and, you know, you can help them, you know, really dealing with their finances, dealing with their scholarship money, how they, how they are, are handling that, managing that. And oh, now good. not only is there, um, you know, scholarship money, obviously there's NIL money mm-hmm. that, that, that needs to be, um, helped and, 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 um, you know, d- discussed and managed. Um, yeah, so that's a position that has evolved for sure, right? For sure, absolutely. And this is a, a position that I think is going to continue mm-hmm. to evolve. And I think this is going to be something that, you know, you'll probably throw more responsibility at as you see what what the task really takes, mm-hmm. right? Once, you know, you see the position. Because, you know, look, we, we've talked about Brian Poley in, in, in his position at, at general manager. And I, I know that his... His, his title says that he's going to deal with the NIL stuff, but the, the, the truth and the reality is is that Brian Polian has no, he's got no relationships with local business owners, right? And you have to have the ability to have conversations with these guys, have, you know, meals with these people, to have, you know, the ability to pick up the phone and, and get them on the line quickly. And, you know, as someone that's in that position, that, that has to be established very early on. Jordan Arsema has that. I mean, he has, he, he's as good of a networker as there is on that staff. He is, every time you turn around, he is at in somewhere that feels like it's the center of it, right? I mean, we were at a seven on seven tournament a few weeks back, and Arsamont is cleared for this because he is a guy that has um, also adopted. Um, a couple of guys that, that, that he's a guardian for. And, you know, some of these guys are, are coming up as players and he has a waiver because he's a, you know, family member to be out there. Now, when he's out there, he's rocking LSU gear. He's got the battle stuff on. And, he, I mean, he's, he's, he's always in it. But, I mean, Kelly and I ran into him in a Houston tournament, in a Houston 7-on-7 tournament um, three weeks ago. And it was as if we were walking around with the commissioner of the league. <laughs> I mean, we saw him for three minutes, him and his, I believe it was his fiance, him and his fiance were walking around the grounds. And this is, this is a, a, a facility in Houston that has, I believe it had 44 turf fields and every field had a game going on between the ages of 12 years old to 18 years old. There are seven-on-seven seven games happening from teams from Hawaii, Arizona, uh, Louisiana, Texas, Florida. I mean, name it. There were in Arsenal and walking around there, I, I'm telling you, every single coach, every player, every relative, you couldn't take three feet. The people, the vendors that were selling the merchandise – I mean, we were, that's where we saw him. I was buying <clears throat> a, you have to have one of these, these, these helmets, these seven on seven helmets in some of these tournaments are mandated for some of the kids to wear. And I was waiting in line to buy Jordan, his helmet and Jordan Arsenal was walking in 
And as he's walking in, I kind of recognize him. He recognizes me. We come over, we start talking. We're just kind of talking as the line is moving up to, 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 to me to buy this, this, this piece of equipment. And I'm telling you, everybody that walked through the gate said hello to him. Mm-hmm. The people behind the counter that were selling the helmet knew exactly who he was. Everybody knows him on a first name basis. The point being is that his name, if you've paid attention to a lot of the recruits that we have on here when we're talking to them about their experience at LSU, his name's one of the first to come out of their mouth. And they, they talk like Jordan. You know, and you're like, some people are like, who's Jordan? You're like, what coach is Jordan? And he's not an on-the-field coach. He hasn't been an on-the-field coach. He's been a part of the recruiting department over the last, you know, year. And the impact that he has made on the program, I, I, I could argue, is as strong as anyone that Kelly has brought in. On staff, on field guys included. When you talk about roster development, roster management, recruiting guys to the roster, you look at the majority of guys that have come in over the last year and a half, and I would, I would be willing to bet that Arsenal has had some type of, some type of pull to that. Some type, he fits in somewhere in the story of that player ending up in Baton Rouge <clears throat> or ending up at LSU. I mean, he, his, his effect on the program up to this point, the return you have gotten on that investment makes perfect sense to elevate him and promote him in the program. Because the position that Polian ha- you know, has now, <laughs> to me, is a position that Arsenal fits perfectly. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, someone that <clears throat> not only has the relationship with the, the players on the, the roster, but then the community. Guys that you can go out and, and, and have a business lunch with. Mm-hmm. And not only in Baton Rouge. I mean, Clearly. he can do it in Houston. <laughs> yeah. He can do it in New Orleans. He can do it in Lafayette. He can do it. He, he can do it in all the areas that make sense for for LSU. Mm-hmm. And he can walk into a room where if there's ten people at the table, odds are three people are going to know him. Mm-hmm. That's and pretty amazing. That's a big deal for it LSU. Is. And to be in that position, that's really what it's all about. Mm-hmm. You know, people want to know the skill set of what it takes to be a college recruiter. That's what it is. Right. The ability to just network to have conversations, to smile when you're having a bad day. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, I mean, that's, that, that's what, what, what can change really kind of the trajectory of, of, of these types of roles in, in football. Mm-hmm. Does, does Arsenal, will he ever have an on-the-field gig? No. He, he'll but never. you're right. He feels like that. Right. And to a lot of people, I think. Like, he could be a coach, right? I feel like he could fit anywhere, really. His, you know, I mean, his, the way he handles himself on social media, yeah. mm-hmm. the way that he understands the mm-hmm. power he does. of social media, the way that he relates to the players. I mean, you hear like Kyron Lacey talk about Jordan Arsenal. Mm-hmm. I mean, you hear some of these guys that have ended up at LSU, the way they talk about him, right. like nobody else. I mm-hmm. mean, like it is, it, it is him who has had, in my opinion, more of effect on more people on the roster than anyone. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, Frank Wilson, yeah. Brian Kelly, all of them included. Yeah. I mean, there's a section of the roster that have had a lot of interaction with those guys, but the entire roster, I would be willing to say, has been touched and affected more by Jordan Arsenal than any other staff member in that building. Yeah, and he's pretty powerful. That is a strong. People don't understand the tool and the weapon mm-hmm. that he is in recruiting. Right. I mean. Virginia saw it first, mm-hmm. really. Virginia was the one that saw, and, you know, seven on seven has become AAU basketball. Right. You know, AAU basketball has become the primary feeding ground of recruiting. You know, the high school basketball coach rarely talks to college coaches mm-hmm. anymore. It's usually talking to handlers or coaches that are coaching them in the summertime and springtime. Seven on seven football is the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's, it's you know, football players are now showing up with, you know, individual coaches and nutritionists and mm-hmm. trainers and people that you've got to get to to recruit them. And odds are it's not the high school football coach anymore. Mm-hmm. Odds are it's either their seven-on-seven, seven, their trainer, their, you know, somebody who I just named. 
Arsenal knows all those people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's got a he's got a relationship with all of those people. So if you need to recruit the trainer, cool. Arsenal's got the relationship. Yeah, you need you to recruit the just as a networker. Collins. I mean, I that's mean he's, some he is I'm telling you, man, he's a master you gotta see it to I didn't know it. Yeah. I didn't I didn't realize it until I saw it in Houston. Uh -huh. I mean, I've heard all these guys come through here. Mm -hmm. I mean, Emory Jones, Will Campbell, even like the big guys. Yeah. Talk about our Samoa. Like, yeah, they it, did. But see, I saw him before he got to LSU. I met him at uh, Destrahan versus Woodlawn. It was a playoff game. Okay. And he was still working at Shock Doctor, and he was doing his Shock Doctor thing. Uh -huh. So he brought all the Woodlawn kids that played on the F3 team, like a Shock Doctor, like goodie box mm -hmm. for the playoffs. And so, like, you could tell right then and there, like, he had the relationship with everybody, yeah. coaches, moms, dads, like, everybody knew who Jordan Arsman was. Yeah. And I didn't know who he was at first. So, I, like, I introduced myself, started talking to him. He started telling me who he was. I told him who I was. And, like, you could just see it. Like, yeah. And this is before he got to LSU. And then once he got to LSU, Perfect now you spot. hear all the yeah. kids, like, Jordan, Jordan, mm -hmm. Jordan, anybody, anybody to talk to. That's amazing. Everybody. Harold Perkins. Jordan. Jordan. I mean, like, it, it doesn't matter. Every single player that has come through here, and if you follow him on social media, he's usually the first to tell you if anybody commits. Yeah, his social's yeah. great. I mean, he, he, he knows first. He probably knows in a lot of instances before Kelly and Wilson, though. I mean, you know, I mean. Kids they, are probably more comfortable telling just, him, yeah, like, like, I ain't coming, coach. Right. Or, this is why I'm not coming. Right? I mean, like, that's the type of relationship he has. So to keep him in the program and really to play keep away from, from, from everybody else. Because what, what, what college coaches are looking for is that they're looking for relationships in Louisiana. They're looking for people that have relationships that can get you into the door in this state because it's such a protected state everybody's kind of got one another's back everybody's kind of like looking out for one another you know it's hard to to crack somewhere where you, you you're the new face you know you're the new guy even if you walk in with a ohio state jumpsuit on that you're going to get a lot of you know a lot of respect from the school that you're representing but still i mean you got to earn your keep you got to earn how how you're treated down here and if you can walk in with somebody like jordan arsema down in louisiana who it, it, it's rare to find anybody that first doesn't know him. And then the more you hang out with him and you see him, you, you don't see anybody that truly doesn't like him. You know what I mean? Like there's not a lot of people out there that has, you know, football is a very jealous, a very, um, you know, I mean, a lot of gossip, a lot of people talking about one another, especially within the coaching trade, right? I mean, a lot of people want people's job. A lot of people are envious about the amount of money somebody's making in a position. People are, are always wanting to, to elevate, promote, get to the next level. I mean, a lot like what we talked about coaching yesterday. You know, I mean, it's a brutal, brutal trade. You know, one day you're, you're riding high, the next day you're looking for work. But in, in a trade that it's rare to find a lot of people that everybody likes. You know, there's usually some recruiting story or some story on staff that pissed somebody off that's kind of rippled its way to to creating some type of feeling around a coach that it's rare to find somebody that you ask, his name comes up, everybody's unanimously usually like, I love that dude. I've never heard a negative thing about I've him. I've never heard anybody <laughs> say one word that says, you know, kind of even like, I don't mm -hmm. know about Jordan. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not, not, nothing. No. And that is, that, that's very difficult to do in recruiting Alone. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure if you ask people at Alabama, or, I was about to you know, say, yeah, around the SEC, I'm sure that that is some of a bitch. I mean, we don't I, like I that. We yeah. don't like that Jordan Arsman guy. But yeah. I mean, you know, comes in here and but, takes I mean, all our guys. There's high school coaches that feel uncomfortable around Frank Wilson. Absolutely. You yeah. know, I mean, like for as good as Wilson is, and he's the best. There's still people out there that may not click with him. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's still tough to find in this trade where you're unanimously accepted, and yeah, LSU true. feels like they have one, and. And it feels like it's a perfect match. Like I said, like he wants it to be in the like does. he wants to be at LSU. LSU wants him, and he knows how to navigate the space. We talked a ton about that when Brian Kelly got hired. Like, oh, how does this fit the landscape? Whatever culture. And it's like when you have guys like Arsenal on staff, Frank Wilson on staff. You go coach. You got the relationship aspect taken care of behind the scenes. Like you have guys that can go glad hand for you that they are already comfortable with. You mm -hmm. don't have to. Doesn't have to be you. You know, Brian Kelly is the CEO. We talk about that all the time. Yeah. Go have people that have already established relationships. Go do their thing. Go recruit. That's what he's going to do well. 
and he already has the people that came in the studio every single one of them listed him as like mm -hmm. a reason as to why they considered lsu or hit the portal and came to lsu he's like that's the first guy i talked to yeah. he's quick on he's quick on the trigger he's good at his job i mean if you look at the influx of louisiana guys that ended up in virginia in charlottesville mm -hmm. over the last couple of years i mean mike collins you know i mean thank god that that you know the tragic situation did not include him losing his life, but ultimately, I mean, he was, you know, caught in that that horrific story on the University of Virginia's campus that happened on a on a bus trip back from Washington D.C. with a, you know, a class, you know, a bus full of 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 students that that Hollins was a part of, and you know, took a gunshot, um, and, and you know, has put his his football career in jeopardy. But ultimately, he will, you know, thankfully remain alive. Um, but I mean, you know, Mike Hollins is, is, is in Charlottesville a lot because of Jordan Arsema. You know I mean? Arsema was up in Virginia being like, yo, we got to go get these Louisiana kids. You know I mean? Like if, if you really want to compete, you got to get these guys in the locker room. And I believe they had a big defensive end from Scotlandville that ended up in Virginia. They, I mean, they had players for a while there that while Arsema was there that were ending up in Charlottesville, and they had guys that were always going up there and and visiting. So I mean, you know, it, it's you you can see the magnetic pull that he has when he's you know wherever he is. But that also scares me that somebody's going to try to steal him away. He well, it leave. shouldn't. Yeah, I don't look think, at what LSU's doing. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't LSU's elevating him. Right. LSU's giving him more money. Well, yeah, they LSU's are, probably then, telling him behind closed doors the next step for you is this. Yeah, you know, and this is what you get next. And if you're recruiting him. You know, one thing that if anybody has to come in here and take him away from LSU, one thing that you're going to have to defeat is that he's home. Mm -hmm. You know that what I mean? True. Like, he, but that's he, really it. There are people that could offer him more, right? Oh, sure. I mean, like, uh, money's always going to talk. Yeah. But one thing that LSU football has yeah. an abundance of yeah. is money. Yeah. Right? I mean, yes. like, we could, you want to get into a bid <laughs> yeah, war? Yeah, we know. <laughs> you want to get into a bid war? Right. I mean, we could do this. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? It's just, where's your, where's your stopping mm -hmm. point? How much does he mean? Yeah, and, you know exactly. what I mean? Like, and the kid that he's a guardian for doesn't graduate until twenty twenty five. And that's Zay. Oh, okay. Yeah, Zay at uh, U High. Mm -hmm. Playa. Playa. I mean, his brother's in <laughs> the NFL. Oh yeah. yeah. The first time I saw his brother play playing Patterson, this dude was just. I was like, who is number one? <laughs> a pro. Four touchdowns. Like, <laughs> oh, I mean, the brothers like. Is that he went to Oregon or, uh, or Oklahoma State? Oklahoma State. Yeah. yeah. He balled out in the bowl game against Notre Dame. Yes. Yeah. Stud. Stud. So, All right, I'd so. imagine that um, he might have some inroads to LSU if he wants that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Great move by LSU. <laughs> great move by LSU. <laughs> yes. I mean, I think that they, they see the value. They understand uh, of what uh, of what it means. And Wait, you this know, was Brian Polian's that. position before? Uh, no, 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 no. No, oh, this was. Uh, thank God. <laughs> no, I, director of player development. I don't know who had it initially last, but like Kevin Falk had it yeah. before he was the running backs coach. I know mm -hmm. um, it's one of those roles that it's like it's not always filled, right? Maybe J.R. Belton, but I know Belton's like head of recruiting, That's so I don't, I, mean, I don't know. I don't. Wanna guess. I don't want to guess. There's so many. I don't want to guess. Um, so many of these jobs. Mm -hmm. So many names. I know. Good for him, though. Well, and this a lot of great. these, a lot of these titles, like. You know, you pay attention like coordinator, director mm -hmm. of player. I mean, that comes with a, a little more money, little compensation. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's so you can go sell the state board of. He's a director. What do you have to do? <laughs> he's the director. You got to pay him like a director. You know what I mean? I can't pay him like I used to pay him. He, he was in the recruiting department. Now he's the director. He's got a desk. <laughs> he's got an office. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, to I go mean, from recruiting specialist to you got a coordinator, coordinator. director yeah, of player right. development. Exactly. Yeah, it sounds you know? like a thing. Mm. Mm. To elevation on the resume for sure. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, it's a new business card. Sounds like a thing. I mean, it's a new business to, um, card. They need to update his. I mean, you give that you give that coordinator title that guy Polian paying six hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> oh I mean, can we get some of that money back <laughs> with the new job and the new title and the new office in the corner? <laughs> We'll take Less work, more money. Good the Lord, dream, man. I mean, they need to sprinkle some nil to the basketball team. And then BK gets a little extra million on the slick. I don't know who discovered that rounding error and was like, oh, who do I have to talk to? The Bobs. Do we have to tell? Do we have to take this public? I mean, can't we just kind of like shuffle this to the back? I know. You think Brad Coates like, dude? They still haven't noticed. I'm not no, going to say anything. Well, Kelly, you know, he donated a million to the, <laughs> the to the facility. Yeah, take your money back. I was like, wow, Kelly's such a nice guy, man. 
Look at Brian. the Kellys. <laughs> Such a great guy. First year on staff, two weeks later, Brian Kelly overpaid a million dollars this year. Back. Oh, okay, now we get it. Why don't you pay a million now, coach? Yeah. Oh, a little tight over here. <laughs> yeah, right. Ross Dellinger's fucking digging in the books again. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's public information. Yeah, right, the Patriot Act. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, all right, so Steven Wagenspach's going to be here shortly, but a huge move for LSU football. I mean, that is, that, that is recognizing talent and hanging on to what it takes to build a program because Arsenal is a guy that you have to have. He has meant so much to recruiting um, that, you know, I mean, obviously to keep him around is just going to pay dividends down, uh, down the future. All right, Saints, uh, Saints lost a couple of guys yesterday in conference, um, including – uh, one of my favorites, bro, Shy Tuttle. Mm. Uh, always that'll be known for the Thanksgiving night stiff arm to Matt Ryan. In his career. Um, and it did. It kind of. He was never the same. No. He was never the same. Did you that. sign with the Falcons? Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, with, Carolina. With, with, uh, with, with, with the Falcons, yes. Um, no, he's with the – Shy Tuttle's with the Panthers. It's uh, – David Omen, yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever, however you say it. Anyamada. 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 Anya. They lost uh, – <laughs> they, they lost – TJ Hushmanzili. They lost Anya Mata to the Falcons. Falcons. And they lose Shy Tuttle to the Panthers uh, in one day. So Mark and, Marcus cool. Davenport, too. Uh, to the Vikings, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. One year deal. But this, and then you saw, did you see what Cam Jordan said on Twitter? He obviously reorganized. I don't know. The Saints books have got to be. Whoever's Cooked. doing that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> like, whoever is looking at that. Can you is put like, that trash can out? Jesus, man. <laughs> what are y'all doing in here? This Sean Payton guy. Can we get the credit card back from him? <laughs> so many papers in here. I mean, this guy bought everybody. <laughs> Rita's looking at the books like, I'm not going to guess Jesus. in 2080 I'll, I'll be able to. still pay paying Marcus Colston. Right. <laughs> Andrew Reeves. 2012, I'm still paying. <laughs> I mean, Lord, Where's Jerry Shockey? Is this Jari Evans? Evans, y'all are still playing? <laughs> Jermaine Bushrod? I mean, Lord, they hadn't even gotten to contracts. Like, I mean, that they, they, they'll have to pay, like, Ramchek. Uh, Jerry's I mean, bird. Uh, not Ramchek. Like, uh, oh. who, who are they dealing with now on the offensive line that they're, they're talking about maybe bringing back? The, uh, Andrus Pete? Oh, God. Oh, and, they, and uh, the center, right? McCoy? Uh, yeah, Eric so McCoy. They moved all that money around, and Cam Jordan also took a deferred payment where you were – you essentially make it bonus money, right? So you get all your money up front, and you convert it off the books later. Kick the can. We're not sure if the cap's real, so we're just going to keep playing this game. But Cam Jordan went on Twitter, and he said, you can see who's leaving. Essentially, it's like making room for a big D tackle. So they're trying to make a splash either in the draft or they're going to find somebody in free agency that – they're trying to retool the defensive line, obviously. Marcus Davenport, I wouldn't say it worked out well. Bust. You could see, yeah, I think it's fair to say a bust trade a first-round pick to try to get him. That's a Sean Payton move. That's fine. Yeah. But to, uh, I guess, realize it now is better than trying to extend him and see if he can. When I mean, he's on the field, he's good. But he couldn't play consistently. So retool that defensive line. You always will trust the Saints defense as long as Dennis Allen's there, right? You would think so. Because <laughs> they yeah. were good. I mean, I mean think so. they gave up like 14 um, points the last six games. Huge and, season for Peyton Turner yeah. needs to happen here. I mean, it's now his time. Right. He probably will be next on the chopping block. Um, who is the best defensive tackle in free agency? Ooh. Um... I mean, I saw where Deron Payne just got paid yesterday for Washington. Yeah. He just made a ton of money. Um, I don't know, man. The more oh, uh, Fletcher Cox is out there. The more yeah, more he's old. About, the more, yeah, Fletcher. right. Don't pay him. He's old. Well, I'm just saying, he's out there. Michael Brockers is out there. He's too old, old, too. Jerry Tiller. Oh, yeah. loser. Oh, God. Y'all Evangel to Notre Dame. <laughs> and he's a dirty player. But I'll take him. I mean, yeah, but I mean, you don't want to break the bank for him. No, not and Jerry Dominican Tillery. Sue, he's out there. You know, I mean, but, one year deal. Yeah, like, nobody. Not really. Yeah, nobody's really out there. I, I don't really see a name that would just make me want to pay him. Right. Alshon Robinson. God, where is he? Is he in Detroit? He's a free agent, but he was. He was a I mean, all-time uni. All-time. Yes. All-time uni. Him and the freak. Who did he? He he. He abused somebody on a PAT at LSU where he, like, pushed him into the backfield. He, like, yeah. blocked it with the left hand. <laughs> oh, God. It was, the, mean, it was the dog days for it LSU. It was like, like, wow. Turn thought, that television off right, right now. Like, LSU had a chance with him. I was like, no, they didn't. <laughs> Never. <laughs> That's an Alabama dog. Trent Richardson's coming to LSU. Like, no, he's not. No, he's not. Uh, all right, Stephen Waggis back. Going to be here next. We'll be back with more of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet.
Alto Glass and Body, the trusted name in frame, body, and automotive paint repair since 1977. They have served their customers for over 45 years. You can find them online at dgbauto.com or stop in and see them Railroad Avenue and Division Street out in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Look, they can help you with your insurance claims. They can make the repair process as stress-free as possible. I'm speaking from experience here. I've got numerous windshields, body repair, all done by Kenny and the crew over at Donaldsonville Glass and Body. They are, without question, the most well-equipped shop in the area. Stop in and see them today. Shop them online, dgbauto.com, or stop in and see the crew over over in Division Street in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Donaldsonville Glass and Bottle. Hey, fellas, it's Jordy Collada for my friends over at Men's Total Health. Guys, do you suffer from fatigue, decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, weight gain or loss, loss of muscle mass, signs of depression, anxiety, hair loss, mental fog, general loss of interest, then you might be suffering from low testosterone. Go see my friend Mike Roach and his great team over at Men's Total Health over in Metairie at menstotalhealth.net online and stop in and see how they can change your life today. A simple shot and some knowledge from Mike Roach can get you back up, moving with your energy, get your sex drive back, build your muscle mass, make you feel young again. All online, menstotalhealth.net. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. We're all from different places and backgrounds. We've each experienced our own versions of life, but in the end, we're all on the same team. I'm part of that team, along with these players in purple and gold. Kayshawn Buddha, Malik Neighbors, Miles Frazier, Kyron Lacy, Barry Brooks. Whether on the field or in the courtroom, your team matters. So join our team. Make a difference. Bet. Let's get it done. The Jordy Collada Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225 485 8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance.
All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show live on this Tuesday morning. As always, brought to you by our friends over at Go Chevrolet. Going to see the crew down in Laplace this morning. If you're looking for a brand new truck, if you're shopping new trucks, remember you can stop in and see the crew at Go Chevrolet. It's always easy to shop them online at GoChevrolet.com, G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com. All right, uh, it is getting towards election season, and we're starting to see some candidates come out and make announcements, and there was a huge one last week as the uh, LA, uh, the lobby, Louisiana Association of Business and Industry president uh, and CEO, Stephen Wagespach, who's a dear friend, great dude, announced that he's putting his name into the uh, the governor's race and is going to run and try to be the next governor of the state of Louisiana. Uh, I will be honest, I have heard nothing but positive about this since it was announced um, and he is joining us in studio now and looking forward to catching up with, uh, with Wags here this morning. Steven, good morning. How are you, man? Good morning. How's it going? Good, man. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, it's been exciting week. It has been. Um, <laughs> tell me, how, where did this start and, and, and kind of how did you get to this point? Yeah, no, it's a good question. Look, um, I've spent most of my career trying to find different ways to help this state reach its potential. And, you know, I've been inside the Capitol. I've been in the private sector. I've been, I've been bounced around over the years. But my mission has always been the same. Um, I'm a guy from Louisiana who wants Louisiana to be great. And, um, you know, this year, I think it's the most important election that we've had in generations. There's term limits, which is going to change that capital up and down the, uh, on every floor. Um, the South right now is booming. States around us are killing it right now, dude. Wow. I mean, they're gaining population, their economic growth. And what's going on in the post-COVID era, um, you got a lot of families and businesses who realize they don't have to live in places they don't want to. Wow. And so they're leaving California, New York, Illinois, they're leaving and they're going south. And so states around us are killing it. And like with supply chains being so broken around the world, manufacturers bringing that stuff back to America, they're moving south. And so states around us are just booming right now. And if you look at Louisiana, we're bottom 10 in population. We're losing people. We're the only state in the south. Our economy shrinking. We're the only state that's shrinking like that. And so you know, it, it just it started to haunt me a little bit. And I was like, you know, I spent my whole career trying to help the state. And I recognize this as the most important election cycle we've had in generations. There's tremendous opportunity. I reckon this, recognize this as there's a southern renaissance going on and we're not feasting at the table. And so I thought, you know, why don't why not get in, offer my services to the state, try to get us back in the game so we can compete. I mean, y'all spend every show on here talking about how you're going to beat, you know, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, all that stuff. Well, I want to beat them economically, and I want to beat them with families. I want to beat them with jobs. And I feel like I got the skill set to do it, and uh, we're all in, man. And, you know, my kids are a little older now. Um, Mm -hmm. Early on, I I kicked the tires of running for something one day, but, you know, now I got one in college. I got two in high school, uh, later in high school, and uh, my wife and I prayed on it, reflected on it, and um, we went in. And so, look, it's not even a full week since I've been in. And um, I got to tell you, the response thus far has been phenomenal been okay. all over the state and uh, getting great feedback. And, you know, I have to work my tail off to get yeah. it done, but uh, fired up, fired up. You, you've seen this up close, obviously, from yeah. your former position of, of seeing these races, seeing these candidates, seeing yeah. these winners, seeing the guys that, 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 that may have fallen short. Um, what, what is the challenge that you're stepping into? What, what are you about to take on? What are you taking on now? Governor's race is a tough race. Doesn't matter who you are, man. Um, you know, most people around the state right now, they're not focused on this. They're driving mm-hmm. carpool. They're they're hanging out. They're making sure their families got what it needs. You know, they're worried about where they're going the summer vacation. They're just living life. And so right now, f- voters aren't overly focused unless they're, they're, they're you know, into this stuff. And so I got to get my name out there. You know, I, most people who rank and file folks don't know who, who I am. So I got to, you know, raise money right now and get my name out there. So that's big, one big challenge. But I think what goes, you know, great for me is, at the end of the day, everyone votes for different offices for different reasons, right? Like when you're voting for a senator, you want that person to go up in D.C. and protect your interests. Don't let anything bad happen to me. But if you're voting for a governor, you want someone that can hang out in your living room, that you can relate with, that you can have a beer with, someone that's solution-oriented, not just looking to throw bombs and, and, and anything like that. You want someone who's going to try to fix problems, I think. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, my career, I, I've, been a, I've been a conservative guy. I'm a conservative. But I like working with anyone and everyone to get the job done, man. And that's kind of my, my career record. And um, I think that's what people want a governor. They want someone who, who has their values, has their principles, has a clear mission and goal, but at the end of the day is willing to work with anyone and everyone to fix a problem that's facing a family in Louisiana. And so I think that's a brand that I have. And I think it's a brand that I need to, you know, raise money and get the word out and, and share with the voters of the state. This takes a team, obviously. Yeah. Have you identified those people? Yeah, I'm putting a team together. I mean, you know, look, I, I'm five days into this, so yeah. I'm kind of building the rocket ship while I'm, you know, launching into the atmosphere. Sure. So uh, 
exciting is one way to word uh, word it. Another way is we like, know the feeling. Uh, yeah, exactly, man. You know, dog yeah, that right. caught the car is the only way to run. Be yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm putting together a good team. I'm excited about. It. I'll be rolling out some of that. Uh, you know, um, pretty soon. But uh, getting a lot of interest, and so it's not scrambling to find people. It's really like sorting through um, applicants and resumes and things. We have seen how social media has changed elections on a national level. How have they changed them on a local level? How do you embrace that as far as a strategy in, in this race? I think it's a game changer, quite frankly. And um, I think you have to be relevant on social media and you have to you have to show your fun side too. I mean, you can't just throw you know, a bunch of boring policy points out there and expect people to be captivated by that. You know, people are you know checking out social media in the moment. You know, they're, they're, they're rolling like this and you got to capture eyeballs. And so look, we're, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on all that stuff. And we're just dialing that up. I mean, it's going to be more. And, but you know, I'm going to try to show not just the personality of me, but you know, I have a, I have a wife who's just phenomenal uh -huh. and she's a, she's a, she's a beautiful, talented, smart lady. She's a great uh, wife. She's a wonderful mom of, of three children. We have a special needs child. She's been a game changer for Christopher's life. She started two small businesses from our kitchen table, wow. and she is a social media beast, man. If you, if, if you don't know Fig and Dove, or, or, or go check it out on Instagram. And um, she has an all-female entrepreneurship team, and they created their own product line, and they dominate wow. social media. So it's something that we've, uh, I've learned a lot from her over the years. And sure. what, I, what I've really figured out in today's day and age is whether you're, whether you're selling a widget or you're selling an idea or you're selling a person, you got to go where the people are. And the people, look, I'm a traditionalist. I go out and get my paper in the morning, a cup of coffee. That's what I am. But I'm kind of a dinosaur in that sense. Most people are getting it on their phone. So if you're not on social media, you're not in the game. Yeah. Lord, she's got 40,000 followers. Um, yeah, she's a beast, man. Crushing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she don't mess around. Um, the state school and the governor's office have had a pretty unique relationship, seemingly. They've been in the news together over the last couple of weeks with basketball courts and yeah. boards. How does how does the relationship work between the governor's office and not just LSU, but just the state college board? It, it seems like that is a, a very clunky relationship just outside looking in. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And, and look, I'm about as LSU as you can get. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in Tiger Stadium. You know, some of my favorite memories. I mean, I can we can. I, we can go 30 minutes on the night the oranges flew when we beat Florida State, man. I mean, so I, I oh, absolutely. I mean, and, and follow up the next week when Tulane, you know, housing us before we go to Orange Bowl. So, I mean, we can go there all day long. So, I grew up in that stadium. Um, but I will tell you, when it, it, I think the role of a governor is, quite frankly, not to meddle and, and to provide vision and leadership. But at the same time, hire good people, put good uh, board members in place, good, put leadership in there, and, and give them the, the tools they need to be successful. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if I'm elected, that'll be how I approach it. And look. It'll be hard for me to be hands off because I'm I'm purple and gold through and through, but that's not that's not the proper role I think for that. And so I would I would want the institution to to come and sit down with me and say, look, I want you to be a, a true flagship. Yeah. I want you to compete for excellence, not just on the field, but also in the classroom and in research and development and entrepreneurship and patents. You tell me what you need and and put it on me to go get it for you. Yeah. And that's what I would want. But after the, at the end of that, I would want to make sure that they feel like they can run, they can operate without my interference in the yeah. team. But you know, traditionally. You know, the, the, the governor appoints the board for LSU, right. and, you know, those appointments are critical. And, you know, um, it's a very popular – I'll tell you, I worked for the previous governor, too. I was his chief of staff and executive council and stuff like that. And um, it's a popular board point, appointment, and you're going to get a lot of inquiries. And as a governor, you have to show discipline and say, not just who do I like the most to put on this board, because it's a crown jewel. You have to say, what is best for the institution? What do they need? Do they need someone who understands public-private partnerships so they can bring in private research dollars? Do they need someone who understands, um, uh, you know, doctorate programs and a certain thing we're trying to accomplish? And you need to really do an analysis of what is best for the institution. So on LSU, that's how I would approach it, um, and that's how I think uh, any governor should approach it. Um, this is a, a, maybe an unfair question in the sense of I don't anticipate an answer any other way other than well, it sounds like no comment. I mean. <laughs> but can Next. La yeah, exactly. <laughs> can Louisiana be successful in the things that we have been habitual failures at, you know, politically, the roads, the, the education, the, the, the crime, all the stuff that seemingly year in, year out, people run on, right? I mean, mm -hmm. is that something that can be overcome here? Hell yeah. Right. Hell yeah. And, you know, the, the, 
we, we, look, there's a lot of policies we got fixed in this state, and I can't wait to talk about all of them. Look, I'm a policy wonk. I'll go wh wherever folks want to go on that. But at the end of the day, I'll tell you the number one problem we have, and it's not even close. It's a culture of low expectations. Yeah. It's a mentality, There's too right? many in this state who do not believe. And they will believe. You, you, you can roll out a curly Holman squad, and they say, you know what? I see a path to the Orange Bowl. I do. I see it. <laughs> right, yeah. But the truth is, if you tell them, hey, we can be great and compete economically, they're like, ah, we tried that back in the day. It doesn't work. And i got to tell you, it's the biggest lie put on this people for decades. Man, it drives me crazy. When I, when I talk to companies, not only around the state, but around the country, I mean, we're part of that recruitment process. You ask them what they're looking for in a state they want to go to. You know what they're looking for? They're looking for a good culture, a low cost of living, people that can read and write and have good soft skills and stay off drugs and work on a team. They're looking for infrastructure. They're looking for um, access to the world for, in, for international importation and deportation. I mean, like everything we have. So look, you, if you fix the schools and you, and you, and you turn high schools into a true launching point for Louisiana kids. Like literally by the time a kid's 16, you say, okay, we know that kid's probably on a four-year track or a two-year track or a straight-to-career track, or we're worried about this kid. This kid's lost. There's kind of four buckets, if you will. If we truly turn high schools into a launching point and say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to maximize that last year and a half of high school, and we're going to give the support services. You go into four-year, let's start dual enrollment. Start taking those classes now your senior year, lower the cost of four-year. You go into two-year, great. Let's start working on getting you a certificate or some apprenticeship opportunities. We're going to bring the two years into high schools. In each bucket, you do that. I think if you just did that alone, we could go market to all these industries around the country and say, yeah, come here. Absolutely. Come here. Absolutely. Well, you need people? We need welders? Or Walker you need accountants? Have you what seen you Walker need? High School? Have I you haven't. seen the campus of Walker? No. They've turned it into a trade school. They've got construction. Well, and, they've and got Walker's welding. the same way out in Livingston Parish. That's what I'm saying, Walker. Oh, I, 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 I think it's an O.P. Walker, no, no, my bad. No, 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 no my Walker bad. High yeah. School in, in Livingston Parish. 100%. Been there. Their, their principal. It is look, amazing. That, the principal is the one who drove that. Yeah. He's the one that does that. And he's brought it in the industry. And look, I love what they're doing there, but it has to be systemic. Sure. You can't just depend on one charismatic principal or one energetic local business who wants to participate. You've got to change the formula, the accountability, the incentives to make it that high schools are competing to bring people in their doors and local businesses are competing to get into the high schools. And so you tweak some formulas and incentives. Yeah. I think we can create that pipeline of people. That's not just good for attracting industry, but dude, that's good for families. Yeah. How many families do you know that their, their, their kids drift off to another state for college and they're like, Oh, I don't know if he'll come back. Look, I'm one of those families. I mentioned my kids, a sophomore. He's a TCU. Oh, wow. He's in Fort Worth and um, loving it. Mm -hmm. And he's surrounded by people who are mm -hmm. uh, motivated Smart, to do bright. great things yeah. and they want to go fix the world. They want to do all this stuff. And you go there and you're like, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. And at the end of the day, I think Louisiana's had been this mindset of, oh, other states have this secret sauce we'll never get. And I think it's a load of crap. And I think we have every intangible we've ever needed. You know how they used to talk about LSU as being like this sleeping giant? It's mm -hmm. just a matter of who's going to put it all together. Right. Nick gets here. Mm-hmm puts the right plan in place, the right leadership. He, he puts the right regiment. Dude, we're, we're, we're playing for natties before you know it. Mm -hmm. I think economically and keeping our family-wise, we're a sleeping giant. Yeah. And well, we just need the right leadership and the right plan. Great advantage for you in your position the last how long at Lobby? Yeah, I mean, it's been awesome. What you've been witnessing. What, what, what have you taken from that time and the relationships, what you've seen, what you've learned into this? Yeah, it's a good, this, good question. You know, I've been in my car for 10 years, basically. Like, yeah, I work here in Baton Rouge, but I've gone to every corner of the state and just listening to businesses and figuring out what they need and all that stuff. And I think the biggest takeaway for me is there's this misperception in politics that, oh, business wants this and people want that and families want that. And the truth is everyone wants the same thing, man. Mm -hmm. they, they, want, they want people, they, they, they want their, student, their kids educated in a school that prepares them for the next steps. Mm -hmm. Every single person wants that. Um, they want a community that's not riddled with crime. Mm -hmm. They want safety. Mm -hmm. um, and they want good roads, as I mentioned earlier. So, I mean, I think the biggest takeaway for me is if you go around listening to people, you realize there's so much more we have in common. There's no reason that capital shouldn't have easy votes to do these bold things. I think we get stuck in bunkers sometimes. Because we talked about earlier the, the beauty of social media, and it is awesome, but also it's, it's, a, it's a devil also. Mm -hmm. Because it's a, it's a clear way for people who are, you know, want division want to throw bombs it's a great platform for them to keep everyone divided and so i'm going to try to run and yeah bring some good solutions but also be a good listener yeah. and try to bring people together 
How can people learn more about what you're your platforms uh wags for la.com nice wags for la.com you can hashtag join team wags um and you know we're in all the social media channels and all but look man you know look join the campaign get to know us look i'm proud of what we're doing but we're trying to start a movement here mm -hmm. we're trying to literally change this we have big aspirational goals we want to change this state forever we're not just trying to win a race we're trying to change state forever and i think we're on the verge of doing it so folks want to join in uh ask more about the campaign wags for la.com great energy great message easy to listen to uh, into the race, our friend Stephen Wagespack, former CEO and president of Lobby, and now uh, entering the uh, the next gubernatorial race here in the state of Louisiana. It's good to hear from you. Great to see you. Thank you, man. Uh, Stephen Wagespack, checking in. We'll be back in uh, with more here. The Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left, and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. In a wreck. Gordon McKern Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done. Are you looking for sound financial advice? Then get in touch with Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. You can call him today at 225-261-8262 or email daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. If you're planning for retirement, saving for college, for children or grandchildren, or just looking for sound investment opportunities, get in touch with Daniel today, 225-261-8262. Located on Magnolia Square Drive in Central, Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. Don't let the name fool you. Men's Total Health has offerings for the ladies too. Guys, is your wife or partner suffering from urinary incontinence, low sexual desire or pain during sex? Then the O-Shot might be for her. Don't let it scare you. It's totally natural. It's PRP and Mike Roach and the crew at Men's Total Health will make you as comfortable as you can be. Contact me for more information, katie at jordycoladashow.com and I'm happy to tell you everything that Men's Total Health has to offer for the ladies. Fourier Insurance Agency, established in 1946, locally can help you with any of your home, auto, commercial, contractors, life and health insurance today. Give them a call, 225-383-0682 or log online to FourierAgency.com.
<laughs> We're with you, bro. Welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Ghost Chevrolet. All right, we got to cut out of here. I got a meeting down in New Looks Orleans so I need to get to. Polo. Uh, good to get uh, good to talk to Stephen Waggis back. Thank you to uh, Will Wade for stopping by here on today's show. Uh, this John ja Morant stuff is is, is too much. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, look, I got a kid that looks up to John ja Morant. My son loves John ja Morant. He's the only jersey that he has and he wears. He wants his shoes when they come out. And if my son was to ask me what happened to Ja, which which he has. And he saw the picture. I would explain to him, Jordan, Ja is 23 years old. And in the same week that he got generational money put on his lap, he was out at a club with girls, guns, music, and food. And, you know, like, and buddy. it's only Tuesday. I, I, I know that I, I wouldn't urge you to do it that way. I wouldn't say that what he's doing is the correct way to do it. But us treating the 23-year-old who just became more of a millionaire and is already one of the faces of the NBA like he's some addict because <laughs> he's hanging out at a strip club with some booze and, and money on the ground. At 23 years old, if you'd have given me a lot of money at the beginning of the week, I can't promise that on Tuesday <laughs> or Wednesday I wouldn't be sitting in a carpet of it with a lot of people around me that probably shouldn't be there. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. And then if the club owner was to put that publicly out on, on pictures, first I'd be pissed, but second of all, I mean, like, you know. It'd be my background on my phone. It's not what I'm doing every day. I just had a good week. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just, guy live? I'm just celebrating a little bit as a 23-year-old. I mean, us treating Ja like he's Tiger Woods is a little overboard to me. I mean, him being shipped off to rehab here for what? Rehab for what? For spending money as a 23 year old in a strip club? Well, they're saying it's counseling. <laughs> Shit, I gotta go to counseling. They're not really saying rehab. They're yeah, saying counseling. Pretty much okay. rehab. So, I mean, that's a, what is that? A, a sensitive that's word? Rehab for, light. For, for, for rehab yeah. in 2023? <laughs> rehab light. I mean, I don't mean to offend everybody out there, but I mean, they've shipped him off to some camp. I mean, they shift Malibu. Uh, they shift Tiger off to Hattiesburg. I know. <laughs> oh, God. Gross, I mean, they baby. pit him behind a, a, a chain link. They had to build fences for him. I know. Over there. <laughs> Let me that's because everybody wanted to see him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I think exactly. they did more than see him. <laughs> I mean, this stuff with Jock. Can we get? Can we get, let the kid back on the, on the know, team? Yeah. I, I mean, God. I mean, come on, Powerade. Well, you know what? I'm on the Gatorade now that you dropped him. Well, so is Jock. He would. He's taking some time away to get help and work on learning better methods of dealing with stress. Dealing with stress? <laughs> he's dealing with rich. That's what he's dealing with. <laughs> no problem. He ain't stressful. stressed out. Did he look stressed out to you? No. I mean, they, they, they stressed out. That looked like a great view. <laughs> so great right I now. mean, that, he's, got, he's got no issues. It's a he's lot of green. He's stressing zero. Whoever is in his camp, his agent, whoever this is that is wording this press release, get a life. <laughs> I mean, just put my client's 23. He got generational money on Monday. He was celebrating on Tuesday. We apologize. You know what? The Memphis Grizzlies are still in the race. <laughs> get it back on the <laughs> team. <laughs> yeah, what do you want him, off the team? I mean, what Nobody do you want him not that. to play? I mean, give me. He's 23. Is he 23? Yeah. He, yeah. yeah. 23? Like 23. Was he 23, to go? coach. Like, did the Grizzlies send him? A, a I don't think the Grizzlies thing. sent him. I think he went on his own. He went on his own. Multi million I mean, dollars. Told, what do you want him, me though. to do? But someone said this would be a good sure. Look That's if what he I'm goes sure. Therapy. I agree that Ja needs a little bit. Of, he needs to pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the you know threatening to fight Shannon Sharp and mm -hmm. I mean like all this acting like you're a tough guy when really you were you were raised in polos and private schools. Yeah. Right? Real name's Clarence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> let's let's not let's not let's not put on. Right. You know, I mean, I think that's what he's most guilty of. But at 23, did you know exactly who you were? Uh, no. Exactly. You know I was a mean? completely like, different Him person. going through an identity <laughs> crisis at 23, I understand. Right. Him being treated like an addict for that, I don't get. Right. The I New mean, York. like. I don't think he's being treated like an addict. Wait, the I'm New York saying. Post but Shipping him that. off. But just counseling. Get the hell out. Let him be counseled in the airplane while we're traveling to the next city <laughs> yeah, to come, play. Come take his feet next that to me. Good Lord. He's yeah. trying to be healthy and do the right thing. Well, the New York Post thinks he went on a booty bender. 
<laughs> booty bender. That's, that's literally what the caption reads. Booty bender. Put it, it on says, my headstone. Inside John ja Morant's 50k gun toting booty bender. What a strip title. Club. I mean, dude, what a night. What a yeah, night. I mean, yeah, what a that's... night. Sorry for partying. <laughs> I mean, I'm 23. Boys. You're damn right it was. The gun wasn't even that big. You know, <laughs> no. like, Powerade and Nike had just signed me on Monday. What do you want me to do, yeah. man? What do you want me to do? You expect me in bed by gun. nine? Refresh, right? Yeah. yeah. We don't have a game tomorrow. In bed with my, my nine. boys are in town. <laughs> the club owner's telling me I'm not I'm not paying for anything. Right. What, what, what do you want from me? He's supposed to be listening to Beethoven, like LeBron. Yeah. What do you want from me? He'll be all right. He He's just should have posted right on thing. IG. He shouldn't have. That Darkness was dumb. Retreat. He doesn't go live. He's yeah. good. Right. He's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Stay exactly. off the phone. He made That's some dumb exactly. young kid decisions. Exactly. Everyone Which does. can be handled in the conversation, not at a camp. Yeah. And you know, he, I not mean, in he rehab. And he's helped. not in rehab. Whatever Stop he's in. That. He is he's just trying to stimulate therapy. the economy. Right. right. I mean, he's helping somebody. <laughs> Leave Ja alone, yeah. man. He's going through an identity crisis. I yeah. feel for him. He, he, yeah, paid he, somebody's, yeah, I mean, he paid somebody's rent that day, all right? Exactly. 50K in the strip club. He paid somebody's yeah, he rent. He, paid he changed somebody. somebody's life. He paid for somebody's kid's tuition. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> somebody got put through year. college on Tuesday, bro. Are we yeah. sure on all... cash. Yeah. <laughs> somebody showed up to the bursar's office with a leather brand. Hey, <laughs> four we're in for four years. <laughs> Your son play sport? No, I'll, no, throw an extra, I'll throw an extra 20K in now if you can give me the diploma now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is cash. This is crisp 20s. Your son, well, not that crisp. <laughs> I mean, it's the, the right amount thing of for him to money do. on the ground. Uh, How much? I mean, coach. Was it, I mean, what is, was it I think hundreds? it was like 50. Pull up the picture. Uh... It has to be ones though, because they make yeah, you get I mean, ones when you go to a strip club. Yeah, yeah. coach, right. you're, you're not going to. You're you talking pay about, taxes you're on talking about, you're, you're talking about the middle class going to the strip club. <laughs> That's this true. is John Morant, who yeah. just became a multi, more of a multi millionaire earlier I mean, that day. I mean, what a club name, Shotgun Willis. That I mean, was the name is, of the club. That's the name of the club. Colorado, this is like Odell God. handing out hundreds on the field afterwards, yeah, blowing yeah. his nose with hundred dollar bills. I mean, you almost literally. have to orchestrate it. Oh, like well, it's in, it's in Houston though. So, oh, okay. oh Colorado. No, I thought they were in Denver. Yeah, they were I did in Denver. Too. Yeah, they, yeah, it yeah. was an off was night. Stewie, Denver. you're in the wrong. Look, you're in the wrong. Oh, link. Look, <laughs> maybe there's two Shotgun Willies. Fifty thousand. Oh, all right. Fifty k. Fifty thousand. Yeah. And ones. In ones. Yeah, that's almost like it. It was. It was just some VIP, you know, like a little yeah, back room action. All right. Yeah. They, I mean, the man's there. What are you just grabbing a trash bag and just scooping? Oh yeah. Yeah. I think they you get just the Hoover. I they just suck it up. They in just the like vacuum. use it. I mean, it's kind of like a oh, like, like a, a broom, like a, like, yeah. a, like a floor broom for a basketball they game. They send yeah, people just, around to do it. Start yep. sweeping it up. Yeah. If you're looking at the, they got the boss man and the pit bosses there, mm -hmm. so no yeah. nefarious deeds are going yeah. on. This is all very. You know, buttoned up. You better mm -hmm. not touch those ones. No, oh, that's why he's there. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. so like I was coming off the top row. I've yeah. seen him like put that foot on. You know? yeah. All right, coach. I yeah, want yeah. you. I want you to love dollars. A dangerous game I mean, to play. it is. It's a cake of money, though. Yeah. Like it's a. It's yeah. layered. It yeah. couldn't be cooler. Like these dollars smell like ass. Anyway, yeah. I'm good. They sweat. <laughs> it looks like a scene in a movie. It, it looks, yeah. It's, you would if you put this in a movie. But like this is over the top. Fifty thousand over two days. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, I went back? I what mean, a day. I mean, hey, sometimes you got to go back, to Powerade and Nike. You think right? she likes me? What do you mean? They put his shoes in a, like a igloo and sent him down a slot. He's uh, like what? Nike's uh, love premier athlete. Oh, really? Yeah, for the All-Star game, they had his shoes, like when they released him, uh -huh. they had like oh, an I igloo set up. Oh, that's man. cool. And it like slid it out of a thing and it like slid out yeah. of some ice. It's pretty cool. That is cool. Well, he'll be all right. He needs to get the no cool phone rule with the crew. Yeah, that, that's you got to Derek oh, yeah. Jeter mm -hmm. that thing. Yeah, you got to Derek Jeter it. Yeah, phones in the bag. But everybody, yeah, everybody. How much do you want to come in the party? I, I, yeah. I've, I've worked my whole life to be at this party. <laughs> yeah. right. Stop me now. You can give up your phone for the next four hours. <laughs> Turtle, you're coming in. <laughs> that's right. Vince, they coming back, sweetheart. Thoughts um, and prayers with Jaw and counseling. He'll be all right. He'll be all right. Leave Jaw alone. Let him be 23. He'll be all right. Uh, all right, everybody, have a good day. Hit that like button, share button, comment button. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Don't forget about voicemail mailbag tomorrow.